cobblestones. Early streets were made of them. Nowadays, they are these granite sets. But they used to be actual cobbles, larger pebbles really, rounded by the flow of water, the kind you find in stream beds. You can walk on them. You can throw them. You can stumble over them. You can read them. So this is a um, granite cobblestone from Berlin. Uh, and what I'm doing is I'm applying a type of rubber uh, used by gravestone engravers in order to um, prepare the stone to be carved into. Is there always um, an excitement before you place the first um, stamp? Uh, an excitement, also a little bit of nervousness, I guess. <laughs> Did you just make a mistake there? Uh, mistake? No, no. No, it's um, th actually where this process is, uh, it's not so nerve wracking because um, I can, I haven't yet done the final marking. And what are you actually doing there? I mean, um, um, this is not the end result. This is not the end result. This is just the, the next step. So um, using the, the stamp with the ink, I'm basically mapping out uh, where I want the carving to go. Uh, so it's almost like a template that I'm creating hmm. re ready for the next step. But this is prob this is actually the first time you did this. Yes, this, this piece was um, a little bit of an experimental piece. Um, that turned out quite well. Uh, but yeah, it was a little bit unknown what I was doing at this point. I mean, the surface of the rubber and then working on an object, on a three-dimensional object, m must feel um, so different um, to the, the large-scale paperwork you, you used to do or still do. Yeah, um, it, it is. And also with these stones, you know, it's not a flat surface. It's a very um, uh, wobbly kind of uh, um, rough surface. So, you know, how you, the, the technique of stamping, of course, has to change. And then you also have to think about the final image on that 3D surface, which is, you know, different to my, my past works. You probably wouldn't have allowed yourself to stamp that, um, how would I say, in such a sketch-like manner on paper, right? No, it's not quite perfect. No. No, but this is not the end result, but just the, the sketch for, um, for what is to follow. Now I see you are taking another tool. Yeah, so this is a, um, a cutting knife. And basically what I have to do is I have to cut out each individual number. So um, making it ready for the next step in the process, which is a, um, a machine that uh, comes and en automatically engraves with, um, with sand and high powered water. Uh, and wherever the rubber is not present, where I've cut out each number, uh, it engraves into the stone. So the, the rubber here you can you can see acts as a as a protective layer, I guess, um, for the stone. Mm. That's interesting because I mean here you drastically leave the path you usually take mm. because now you're giving it out of your hands to to let a machine actually do the stamping. Yes, it wasn't actually a choice of, of mine. I originally did a little uh, course in, in stone chiseling. I had wanted to, to do the work all by hand with a, a hammer and a chisel, but uh, reality set in and I realized that uh, it wasn't going to be possible. So the next best thing that I could do was was this process here. And it's still, you know, I mean, it it's a, a much more <laughs> time consuming than the already before time consuming technique. But um, yeah, it still yeah. allows me uh, to to really kind of connect in a handmade way with the object, uh, but in a more realistic way than a 
hammer and chisel. So what you're seeing here is we've skipped a we've skipped a stage. We've skipped the the stone uh, being engraved by the machine. I can say something about this. I wanted to, of course, film this as well, but the people told me that uh, it's just gonna the stone is gonna um, disappear into a huge mas machine where it's being um, shot at with sand. S sand blasted. So it's clear clear that I can't follow into this machine with my with myself and the camera because we're all going to be sandblasted <laughs> and um and and so the the stone comes out with the zeros and the ones engraved into them hmm. and so i thought we thought we'd skip that right thought we'd skip that maybe yeah. even because that that part of the process is really not in your hands and i was interested in in really showing hmm. the hands of the artist making the the piece while that I think is a, an interesting point for me. How how important do you actually find it that it is your hands creating that piece? I mean, you could also have had the idea and told your uh, very capable assistants to just <laughs> realize it. It it would be quite a um, a big step for me to actually step out of that because the handmade part of it is a is. A huge part of it for me and actually the way that I came into you know working with the stone and, and moving into this concept uh, came from from thinking back to to ancient ways of information storage and of course you know the ancient Egyptians and the Greeks and the Romans you know how they would engrave tablets in clay and and marble and, and different types of stone and you know this the, the the time and the the feeling of the 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 craft of of that person actually chiseling into the stone this information um as a record and how that has uh, lasted all this time and and so you know that was how i came to the the idea of you know and this crazy concept of putting this uh, this you know modern language of ones and zeros binary code engraving it into stone you know, the paradox of that was just so fascinating for me. But is it more, it's more a time coming to us or the whole of a civilization that is gone? Mm. Or is it really that one person doing it? No, it's, it? it's, it's more of the, the broader context um, of it. Uh, the, you know, the, the way of how information, uh, how we communicate information has changed as well. You know, at, in those times in that civilization, it was through stone. A lot of the time, you know, that's how you were able to keep records. Uh, now we keep them in data banks that don't, I mean, they exist, but, you know, to the eye, it almost doesn't exist. You know, the access to the, that information has changed. Um, but while we've been talking, I've also realized the other connection for me was back to the South African connection of, of uh, Bushman engravings. That was my kind of first... Um, Engravings or paintings? Engravings, because they, oh. they did paintings, which, uh, you know, in a lot of my work in the last year, I've been very interested in with the pigments and all of that. But um, they they also engraved. And often, you know, when you're in the landscape in South Africa, you walk around and you see this weird sign or symbol or shape uh, etched into just a random rock. And happens every day when I walk around in <laughs> South Africa. Yeah. Um, but... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and the meaning of these, these symbols has been lost. Um, you know, nobody really knows what the symbols meant or they, you know, they think there's something to do with oh, the really? stars. It's, it's or not known. It's not known or some kind of spiritual aspect. But, uh, you know, there, there was in this situation, in this particular case, there was one individual that, that sat there in that landscape, in that place, and uh, meticulously carved out something that had meaning. Um and that meaning does still exist in that shape. It's it's just and in that stone, um, and the memory of that incident still resonates within that space. But but the actual words are lost on us, mm -hmm. and so it becomes more a feeling, um, and it becomes more a, a resonance. And and this is also very interesting to me, and it left a big impact on me as a child. I mean, my I used to go and do um, uh, charcoal etchings. Uh, of these engravings and uh, you know it um, it seems to have kind of uh, in 
over the years connected back into this very this work here? So this is just normal golden tin foil you can buy <laughs> in the supermarket, right? One one euro shop. No, it's actually um quite expensive twenty four karat gold leaf. I've been told by the 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 gravestone um engravers that this is the 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 best quality that you can use for this process, and um and that this is what they use. And I mean gravestones are are meant to spend years outdoors, and uh, and so um technically the 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 sculpture the cobblestone could exist as an outdoor sculpture as well um i think this is basically oh what is this oh there you go yeah we oh we did some close ups oh we did some i did some close ups okay now here you are actually done applying all the gold leaf mhm mm so this is now it has to sit for the two days um, and you can see that the gold leaf is not only in the ones and zeros, it's all over the, the stone. So um, that's when I will come with the toothbrush and 